What's up people? This is Ekibaro once again here on Flow Deco. I'm very happy for you to follow my channel Flow Deco Kenya. Flow Deco Kenya on, on YouTube. And today I'm in Roiro. So our action today is we're using the beam to beam technology to flow a suspended foundation. Remember guys, I've been telling you about black cotton soil, which is a very big disaster here in this country. And if you're building on black cotton soil, you do need to excavate it and go dump it somewhere else and bring back suitable soil or favorable soil for your foundation. So what happens with black cotton soil, it is very expansive, it heaves up and down. When it rains, it expands. When it's dry, it collapses. So the up and down movement make our foundation unstable. We have a technology called beam to beam floor covering or beam to beam flooring system that is used to do your foundation without the need to excavate the soils. All you need to do is design your columns, dig them up or to the, to the stable grounds, do the footing from down there and then come up and introduce ground beams. So today in Roiro, we're doing an installation at a site and I'm gonna take you through how it's done, how we lay these beams, up to the end products. Karibu sana. As you can see, my, my, my ground beams are ready to receive my pre-stressed T-beams. It's a very easy concept that requires unskilled laborers to lay the beams and assemble the blocks into place. From the factory, we produce the pre-stressed T-beams customized to suit your drawing. So we come and actually measure, and by the time we're doing the production, we already know which beam and what size is required where and we issue an installation drawing. So installation of this is very easy. It can be done by anyone with the assistance of one trained fundi who knows how to read the drawing. Once you have the drawing manual with you, you instruct the unskilled barrels what length beam to pick and where to place it. It's a very simple skill. It's very easy to do it. However, those beams are heavy, need to be lifted by strong men depending by the, the width of the, of, the, of, the, of the length of the beam. And care has to be taken because this beam can injure. So you have to wear protective clothing, the PPEs, and coordination must be very, very vital in the whole installation process. After the ring beams are laid out, we need a plumber and the electrical person to be at the side to direct where the piping will go. So on the ground floor foundation, the piping goes under the under under the, the ground beams. So you lay it down there, pass it through. Of course, there's an installation drawing. The plumber and uh, an electrician already know. Once that is placed, we now are ready to lock the blocks in place. Our blocks are special. They have a locking flange at the end, which actually connect with the T-beam in a special way. And the block has a compressive strength of seven Newton meter squared, which is enough to carry any load, a wheelbarrow, or the people going through. So the moment you lay this block, you already have a platform to work on, and it becomes very easy to lay the next beam because you, you, you're going to be standing on the on the platform that you've just interlocked the blocks. When these blocks are laid in place, once again, the plumber and the electrician should, should come and know where to run their piping, their cables. If you're installing any toilets or any floor traps, you need to have a grind on site. So both the installation and the plumbing team need to have a grind on site to, because we're ready to pour concrete. So you need to do the siding. So you can use the siding from timber or marine bone. Have the siding at the perimeter of your of your slab, so that when you pour concrete, it doesn't go beyond. And the concrete is used like a binder, so it's going to bind everything together. And before you pour concrete, you need to grout the surface with sand. You can use the sand to, to grout the surface. And the concrete is used like a binder. So it's going to bind everything together. And before you pour concrete, 
you need to grout the surface with sand you can use the sand to, to grout the surface so that the blocks and the concrete can bind together to bring that monolithic surface we only need we only need a 50 millimeter topping normal that and this is where the savings occurs in the traditional setup we do up to 150 millimeter of concrete topping but with beam to beam flooring you only need 50 millimeter concrete topping you don't need a brc on it since we use concrete fiber mesh so the concrete fiber mesh you mix in a special ratio in this case we use one bag which is 900 grams for every four bag of cements so depending on the number of cbms that you need you already know how many bags of cement you need so you can order the, fi the, the, the fiber mesh it costs from a, th a thousand shillings compared to the brc which is way expensive so there goes again a big saving in that scenario so once you pour the concrete the job is done you only need to water it for four more days and you can start walling up to go to the other level in this case we'll be going to the first floor so the wall will take like what seven days we are there at the lintel the rain beam is casted and the beam to beam flooring is ready to be laid on top so thank you for subscribing to my channel if you happen to be building on a black cotton soil you're on a sloppy terrain or you just need to raise your foundation to the level that you want because some areas is mushy the water the drainage is not very good then beam to beam flooring is the best option even those with red soil areas you it's highly recommended to use beam to beam flooring for your foundation is a huge savings in financials in the time taken to do your foundation and with the stress of termites with the rest foundation with the beam to beam it's very easy to maneuver or to navigate the termite issue thank you very much